May 19th. It's happening again, Kane. That was one of the worst storylines of all time. And in case you didn't know, today is in fact May 19th. And tonight, WWE's Money in the Bank is completely overshadowed by the series finale of Game of Thrones. And I don't care if you don't watch Game of Thrones. I don't watch it. But you have to be living under a rock if you don't know that tonight is the series finale. And no one cared about Money in the Bank. I'm looking at the Twitter trends, which whenever there's a pay-per-view, WWE always dominates the Twitter trends. They're number one in everything. And I know trending on Twitter is not a huge deal. But still, it just shows you how much bigger Game of Thrones was. And I'm sure they regret putting it on the same night. You also had basketball tonight, the NBA playoffs. So this wasn't necessarily a high-profile show, and that's unfortunate because this was one of the best pay-per-views I've seen in a while. Easily the best pay-per-view this year. Better than WrestleMania, I think. Better than the Royal Rumble. And I thought WrestleMania and the Rumble were both pretty good this year. This show was better than both of them. Um, better than the other two shows, Chamber and Fastlane. I would say probably... The best pay-per-view from WWE since maybe the Evolution show. This might have been even better than that. This was really good. Not on the level of a takeover, but this was a damn good show. He had some really good stuff here. So let's get started on the pre-show. We had a whole bunch of interviews. There was a Becky Lynch interview. There was a Lacey Evans interview. You had the woman backstage uh, just interviewing random people. It was horrible. It went on forever. They finally get the match. That's going to be on the show. It's a non-title match. Daniel Bryan and Rowan against the Usos. I originally thought Bryan and Rowan were going to win because I thought it was a title match. Then when I found out it wasn't a title match when I did my predictions yesterday, oh, I realized uh, what's going to happen is the Usos and they're going to this feud. So Usos won the match. It was pretty good. It was just basically a SmackDown match, just done to set other things up. So we get to the main show, and before the show started, they had Naomi come out on the pre-show, and she made her entrance, and she was already in the ring when they started the show. We get to the show, um, all the women come out, Bailey comes out last, which was interesting, because I thought, you know, I don't know how much they view Bailey, but when she came out last, it, it impressed me, because I thought to myself, they might look at her a big, as a big deal. So you have Naomi, you have Natalia, you have Bailey. Mandy Rose, who's accompanied by Sonya Deville, Ember Moon, Dana Brooke, Nikki Cross, who's replacing Alexa Bliss, and you had Carmella, who did a fake injury in this match. So I really like this. I was expecting not to like it because usually the woman's money in the bank, they don't do anything. And here they really didn't do anything big until the end. We got some cool spots near the end, but it's really safe. They do a lot of spots with the ladder, like slamming each other into the ladder, hitting themselves with the ladder rather than doing high spots off the ladder. But it got really good at the end. I really like the part in which there's all these women on one ladder and then they, 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 it all gets tipped over and they smash into the ropes. That was pretty crazy. The craziest part was Dana Brooke. Like, it looked like she was going to die. She's, uh, that she does that thing where she grabs the briefcase and like she leaves the ladder and she's just swinging. It looked dangerous as hell. Uh, but thankfully, uh, Mandy Rose had to pull her back or else she would have died. You also had a really crazy part in which Ember Moon is on, on the ladder from the outside and she does the eclipse dropping from a ladder outside the ring to inside the ring and nailing Natty with her finish with the Eclipse. You had uh, some hard stuff here. You had, uh, I think it was Mandy or maybe Naomi who uh, got hit hard with the ladder. Uh, the match was good. Naomi did well here. She had a uh, time to shine. She had a, like, a Princess Leia hairdo here. They had the ending really well done. It looks like for sure Mandy Rose is going to win. They make Carmella do this heroic babyface comeback. They had the Miz do that a while ago in the Money in the Bank match, if I recall. But what you have is Carmella uh, makes a heroic comeback, but then Sonya Deville takes Carmella off the uh, ladder, which no one wanted Carmella to win anyway, so it didn't matter. And Mandy Rose has been beaten up by Carmella, and Sonya Deville has to carry Mandy Rose. She puts Mandy Rose on her shoulders, and she carries her to the ring. She carries Mandy up the ladder, and she's basically ha they're on the ladder together, and Sonya has Mandy, and she's now uh, puts Mandy above her, and she's behind Mandy to kind of guide her through it, and she's like right under her, like climbing with the ladder for her. Like it looks like she's just gonna put Mandy on her head or on her shoulders and just carry her to the briefcase. But what happens is. 
they do a really good spot in which it looks like Mandy's going to get it when Sonya is behind her. Bria, to make, make attention to that because Sonya's right behind her. Bailey jumps out of nowhere, comes to the top ladder, pushes Mandy, and she falls back onto Sonya, and they both crash to the ground. Bailey gets the briefcase. That was an amazing moment. I marked out. I did not expect that. Bailey wins Money in the Bank. A great surprise. Really, really good here. Really good moment. And uh, how could you not be happy for Bailey? She wins Money in the Bank. Big surprise and a good surprise here. I was not expecting her to win. And what happened later made it even better. But really happy for Bailey to win this match. Next, we go to a backstage run with Sami Zayn and Triple H. This was stupid. He wants Braun Strowman banned. It's dumb. Um, I guess how they ended up doing it at the end made perfect sense. Up next, we go to the U.S. title match, Rey Mysterio and Samoa Joe. And this, the whole theme of the show was the referees fucking up. I guess they're going to do this. I don't know if this is a play on sports because the referees fuck up in sports sometimes. Maybe the referees trying to do that too, but... It, it seems to me like they're going to overturn this on SmackDown. I can see Samoa Joe winning the belt back on SmackDown after they just overturn the match. Maybe Shane overturns it because Joe's, they even make notice. Joe's shoulders are clearly up. Maybe they're doing a play on Ronda Rousey and the WrestleMania main event in which her shoulders were clearly up when she was getting pinned. But this match was the reverse of the Mania match. It was, uh, Joe want, was, you know, in control for a while, a minute. Ray gets a roll up. One, two, three. It's over. And Joe was busted up bad. Dominic celebrates with Ray, and uh, Joe beats down Ray. I thought he was going to choke out Dominic, but he beats down Ray, leaves him laying. It was a good segment at the end. I thought Joe looked like a monster, especially with the blood. Joe's a beast, but uh, it, was, it was okay. But I think they're going to probably have to switch the title back to Joe because uh, his shoulders were up. Next, you go to the worst match of the night, in my opinion. Uh, Miz and Shane McMahon. I hated this. This was a cage match. Boring as hell. I hate how Shane McMahon's a coward to the Miz. Why would you be afraid of the Miz? The Miz is not intimidating. He's not a badass babyface. Uh, I don't care about the Miz's dad, George. I thought they had a good match at WrestleMania. I enjoyed it. But here, this match sucked. This was a shitty match. It went on for so long. Shane McMahon's sweating profusely. He's like, he's because he's the boss of Sunday, he's going to get these matches. It's bullshit. The match sucked for a while. You didn't really have Shane do any big spots. There was no spots here. I thought for sure you'd get that with Shane. The Miz threw him off the cage one time, and it was nothing really big. It was kind of boring, to be honest. I just was not into this match. I'm not a fan of the Miz. He is so fucking safe. It's like you're in a fucking cage. I get you're safe, uh, but for fuck's sakes, dude. It's a fucking cage match. Do something here. He just has to be so protective. and It's the king of soft style with the Miz. He's a horrible baby face. I can't stand him as a face. He's so soft. He's such a good cowardly heel. He's a chicken shit heel. But and then, and people complaining, I don't care. I don't like the Miz anyway. So I don't mind Shane winning, to be honest. And I, I knew Shane had to win. He has to win. Because if he's going to feud with Roman Reigns, you're not going to lose to the Miz. It makes no sense to lose to the Miz when you're going to feud with Roman Reigns. And that's clearly where they're going. But... Uh, Shane, the Miz, Shane is so sweaty that, uh, the Miz grabs his, uh, and he's outside the cage, uh, outside the top, trying to drop to the floor, Miz is on the inside part, Miz grabs his shirt, and Shane is so sweaty, he slips out of his shirt, and he falls to the ground, and Shane McMahon, uh, wins the cage match by escape. Up next, you have the match that was really good, but no one can give two shits about, and that's a cruiserweight title match. Arya Davari came out in a car. They made him look like a star. It's like, yeah, they're actually trying to do something here. He challenged Choni Nice. The match was really good, but I'll be honest, I didn't give a shit because I'm proud of this. I have not watched one episode of 205 Live since it was released, like since its inception on the WWE Network. I have not watched one episode. I didn't even watch any of the Cruiserweight Classics, so I do not know who anyone is. I don't care. I know Davari's older brother. I know who he is, but I don't know. I haven't really paid attention to his work. I've, Tony Nese had a good match with, uh, who was a Buddy Murphy on the Mania pre show, but I, mean, I don't look at him like as someone I have to watch 205 Live for. But Nice won. The match was pretty good. I mean, it was a good match. He tried hard, it's just no one can care less. Next, we have the Raw Women's Championship. Becky Lynch. Oh, also, I forgot to mention, uh, they did some segments backstage in which, uh, Sami Zayn is found hanging upside down. It was Brock, but it was cool how they, they made it at the end. Brock Lesnar really did it, but it made you think it was uh, Braun Strowman. What I thought was going to happen was, I thought Sami Zayn is being hung upside down because he's doing it to himself, and he's going to come back, 
come out of the hospital and steal the briefcase. That's exactly what I thought was going to happen. I thought that's what they're going to do. He did it to himself to get Stroman out of the building. I thought that made him look smart, but I guess not. Anyway, uh, they they uh, they do that, and uh, then they do another segment backstage, and Triple H tells Braun Strowman to leave, and he says, whatever, and Strowman leaves. So Becky Lynch and Lacey Evans... Um, Lacey Evans is not too bad in the ring, but there was a lot of botches here. Some people can blame her on Becky. I blame her on both. Lacey Evans is not ready to be in the spot, but there was some sloppiness. She worked hard. Uh, they didn't really do a situation where the match was a bad match at all, but it was something when which just doesn't feel like she deserves to be here. I don't think people want to see her here. Maybe she can eventually earn her way to this opportunity, but uh, I don't like to be the guy, oh, she deserves it. She doesn't deserve it. It's not her turn, yada, yada, yada. I just don't see it in Lacey Evans, in my opinion. I don't see her as a star at all. I just don't buy her. I know she... I hate the gimmick. I hate... That napkin spot was disgusting. Like, she wipes her armpits and puts them back his mouth. Ugh, that's gross. But she can not do that. I want to see who this person is. She was a fucking Marine. I want to see who the Marine. I don't give a fuck about the sassy Southern Belle. So, in the match, you had parts in which they teased Lacey could win. But for me, I never really bought any part in the match where I thought Lacey Evans was going to win. I thought for sure Becky was going to win because this was the first match. I thought she'd win the first and lose the second. And there's no way I think they're going to give Becky Lynch, uh, they're going to take both belts off of her. Because in the situation in which you let this woman main event WrestleMania, she became Becky two belts. She won both titles. You're going to take both titles off of her in six weeks. They're probably going to take one title off of her so she can stay on uh, one brand. And I figured it would be the SmackDown title. Because this was the first match, there was nothing Lacey Evans did that, that caught my eye. I thought, oh, she's going to win. But it was, a, it was a fine ending. The referee fucked up again. Lacey had Becky for a roll-up. So that's how they're going to continue the feud. Becky turns it into a disarmor, and Lacey Evans taps out in a millisecond. I don't know if that was a good move to make Lacey look bad, but it was a quick arm bar submission with the disarmor. Next, Charlotte comes out. She immediately jump, gets in the ring, challenges Becky. Becky hesitates, but she eventually accepts it to do the match right away. Smack Woman's title, Becky and Charlotte. Uh, you know, they've had a million matches. Becky's tired here. That's the story here. They're not going to really have a, a chance to have a great match here. What it was was it went on for a while. It had like, what, a few minutes, not too long. Uh, Becky just had a longer match with Lacey Evans. And what happens is at the end of the match... There is a spot in which they're on the outside and Becky gets back in the ring after Charlotte almost hurts her back with, uh, she tries a natural selection on the outside on the apron. She hits the apron and Becky's back in the ring and then all of a sudden Lacey Evans comes out of nowhere. She comes back and hits Becky with the woman's right. Becky's hit. She, uh, almost pins Charlotte though with the roll up, but then Charlotte gets up, hits Becky with a boot. One, two, three. Charlotte's champ. Just do it with a natural selection, not a stupid big boot. But Charlotte is your SmackDown Women's Champion. Becky's devastated, but uh, Charlotte's rubbing it in. Lacey gets in the ring, and Be- Charlotte and Lacey continue to attack Becky. They beat her up. They take her down in the corner, and, okay, the way they're setting us up, someone's coming out. I'm thinking it's going to be Bailey or it could be Sasha Banks. That's what I was thinking. It's Bailey. Bailey comes out. She comes running to the ring. She throws Lacey out. Charlotte attacks her, though. It looks like Charlotte's going to get away. But then Bailey attacks Charlotte. She throws her into the ring post. And, oh, Charlotte's down. Bailey hesitates. The fans are just losing their shit. We want to see it. They're going crazy. It's a really good moment. And then, finally, Bailey cashes in her money in the bank briefcase on Charlotte. Charlotte is down. Bailey goes to the top rope, hits an elbow drop. One, two, three. Bailey is the SmackDown Women's Champion. What an amazing moment. This was just great. I really marked out here. I thought this was one of the best moments WWE has had uh, in a while. I mean, maybe besides WrestleMania with some of the moments they had there. But in terms of a non-pay-per-view, really, we really never get happy endings. This was a good one. This was a great moment. She was so happy. She's elated. She jumps in the crowd. The fans love her. They're celebrating with her. It's like, this was the Bailey we all know and love. This was the Bailey from NXT. This was when she won the title from Sasha Banks on the first uh, takeover show in Brooklyn. This is the Bailey who we thought could be the female John Cena. This is who we wanted to see. What an amazing moment. She was a legitimate, sympathetic character. It seems like they never had much uh, for anything for her. 
But this was just a really happy, genuinely nice moment to watch. I don't see how anyone could not like this. This was great. She's happy. She's on top of the world. She's a SmackDown Women's Champion. And not to sour on her parade, but there were some people I saw on Twitter This is a who, who think this is a big fuck you to Sasha Banks. See, the thing I don't know about this is they mentioned Sasha Banks a lot. After Bailey won the match, you had, I think it was Charlie coming to ring, and she mentioned Sasha Banks a lot. When Bailey won the title, they mentioned Sasha again. I don't think Sasha Banks is leaving WWE anymore. I think they probably worked everything out. They probably came to terms, and I think I'll expect to see her soon. She may even feud with Bailey soon after this, but I don't think Sasha Banks is done because I think they're going to have more to do with her, and I think they're going to have plans for her, probably with Bailey again. But Bailey's your champion. This was a great moment. Just awesome. Loved it. Loved it. An amazing moment. Congratulations, Bailey. Up next, we go to the WWE Universal Championship in a match I thought a lot of people expected to close the show, but they didn't. Uh, you had Seth Rollins defending against AJ Styles and probably the best main roster match of the year. I don't think I can think of anything better. Maybe Daniel Bryan and Kofi. I thought this was even better than that. This didn't have the emotion of that match, but I, th- as a technical wrestling match, it was superior. Uh, not on the level of Gargano and Cole, and not even close, to be honest. Not in that ballpark, but uh, this was a great main roster match. One of the best I've seen in a while. Easily the best of the year. I really enjoyed it. This was a great match. A lot of near falls. And we knew they were going to go a long time. The one thing I just didn't understand is, why was this on before the Kofi Kings and Kevin Owens match? Didn't they know that Matt, that match was going to have a hard time following this? I don't understand the match order sometimes for pay-per-views, but this really should have been the co-main event. And they had a really great match here. I loved it. AJ Styles, Seth Rollins, two of the best wrestlers in the world. Seth's great. The fans were more into Rollins, and they're clearly going to have AJ turn heel eventually and probably extend the feud. But uh, I see Seth as a guy who the company has a lot invested in, and they want him to be the top guy. And AJ is older, but I think AJ is still at the he's still going to be at the top of the card, but not to the level that Rollins will be. Rollins is someone who the company clearly has a lot invested in right now. He has a great match with AJ. He had a really great spot, probably one of my favorite spots I've seen in a while. Is uh, Seth goes for a curb stop, and AJ just counters it. And when Seth goes up to slam your head into the ground, AJ pops up and gets him into a Styles Clash, hit the Styles Clash. Love that spot. Rollins kicks out. They teased that that could be the end. There were some really close uh, near falls here. But eventually, Rollins hits the uh, the curb stomp, or I don't even know what they call it anymore. I don't know if they're allowed to call it the curb stomp. He hits it, crawls to the cover, pins AJ. Seth Rollins is still champ. Great match. At the end, he had a really good embrace. They, uh, they had Rollins as champ, and AJ gets in the ring, and they, they shake hands. And I think this feud probably continues, but it could be Brock. I don't know. But I don't know when Brock's entered into the title picture, but... I think they could go back to this match sooner or later. Maybe not now. Maybe they go to Brock because it's Saudi Arabia. But yeah, it'll probably be Brock because Saudi Arabia. But um, I don't. I think we'll see more eventually down the road. Maybe SummerSlam or something like that. But Seth uh, keeps his title. They go backstage with uh, Kofi and uh, Xavier. Xavier's all uh, pumping Kofi up for the match. They have the match. It's a good match. It was fine, just it was nowhere near as good as the match. I just, I don't know why this was so late in the show. Uh, it probably would have been better earlier in the show. It really would have. I don't know why you had to have this as the co-main event. And there's no reason in the hell that you have this match follow a match that they couldn't follow. And that was uh, Seth and AJ. Why was this after? I don't get it. This really should have been uh, switched around. But the match was still good. The crowd was dead. I was tired, to be honest. I really wasn't too emotionally invested. He had a really good spot, though. Kofi jumps out of the ring, and KO hits him with a super kick. That was good. They get back to the ring, and uh, KO removes uh, Kofi's shoes. And uh, Kofi, with his socks, hits the trouble in paradise, retains the title, and Kofi is still champion. Uh, much to dismay, to dismay of uh, a certain older Hall of Fame wrestler. I'm sure he's just f- furious right now. But Kofi keeps the belt. Uh, also on the show, they ran down the Super Showdown, the Saudi show uh, in June. They ran that show down a bit. They hyped it up. It is what it is. Not too excited for that. 
Finally, the main event. It's seven men now, so Sami Zayn's not. I was, I was for sure thinking, Sami's gonna make a heroic comeback. He's gonna fake this whole thing up. He hung himself upside down. Uh, he framed Strowman to get him out, and then he's gonna come back from the local medical facility. The local medical facility is gonna check out, come back, and win this match. Nope, not not happened at all. So you have. Baron Corbin, you have Drew McIntyre, you have Ricochet, you have Finn Balor, all from Raw. From SmackDown, uh, you have, sorry, yeah, Finn Balor actually, uh, from, um, from, uh, SmackDown. The other three are from Raw. The fourth guy from Raw was Sami Zayn. But you have, uh, Finn Balor from SmackDown. You have Andrade and you have Ali. So, Starts off really fast. This is a crazy match. One of the best Money in the Bank matches I've seen in a while. This was a brutal match. It was really vicious. I hated... I don't know how I felt about it. There's this... Okay, so... We all know the spot. Finn Balor and Andrade are on top of a ladder. They're at the top. And uh, there's a ladder. Uh, it's in the ring. And there's a ladder that's set up on the ring ropes. And onto a... A part of the a step on the ladder that's below the ring, the top ring rope to explain. So the ladder is facing, it's basically curved or it's diagonally, uh, not diagonally, it's, it's vertically downward. It's not evenly straight. They've done that spot before, but it's straight. They get, they go to the step, uh, on the same level as the ring rope. Here it's a step below. So the, it's inverted the ladder. It's not balanced and it looks like a situation where, Someone can get hurt if they took a bump, and this is what happened. So Andrade hits a sunset flip. Okay, didn't look too impressive at first. Right, he lands on his back. I couldn't believe what I saw. I was I freaked out. I thought, oh, my God, Finn Balor must have died. He hits a sunset flip. It goes down, and then the ladder springs back on the ropes, and it jumps back up, and then Finn just takes the nastiest power bomb bump into the ladder and then he bounces up and he smashes again into the ladder what the fuck this was a nasty fucking spot Finn Balor must be has a death wish here what the fuck is Finn Balor thinking what the hell's wrong with him he's gonna get himself killed this was fucking crazy it was ridiculous I am shocked they fucking allowed this oh my god that was crazy they get back and there's more chaos. There's Andrade almost kills Ali. He does, uh, this, I don't even know what you call it. Um, I don't know the name of the but it's fucking crazy. And Michael Cole freaks out. These, what the hell is wrong with these guys? That's the only time I've ever heard Michael Cole not sound like a robot. There's more violent spots. Uh, Baron Corbin hits a choke slam on Ali through a announce table. There's a brutal spot through the ladder that was set up uh, on the, uh, off the ring apron onto the announce table, so it's a bridge outside. Uh, I think it was uh, uh, McIntyre. He slammed, I believe, Ali or or sorry, no, no, no. It was Ricochet. He slams Ricochet through the ladder. McIntyre and Corbin are against each other, and just there's more chaos. There's more guys just taking vicious ladder spots, vicious uh, bumps. There's there's some blood here from Ali at the end, and at the end of the match, Ali's on top of the ladder. Everyone's out. Uh, everyone's down on the floor. Ali is left alone. I'm thinking to myself, Sammy probably. Brock Lesnar's music hits. Oh my god. He destroys everything. He throws a ladder at a cameraman. He throws a ladder at Ali, and Ali was bleeding like crazy, and I heard that they couldn't show uh, the camera on him. But it's all destruction. Brock, uh, everyone's killed themselves in this match. They beat them out themselves up so bad. Oh, there's also a cool spot. I think it was, uh, I don't know if it was Ali or Andrade. There's a suicide st- dive, and Corbin catches him into a deep sick out- outside. That was pretty good, too. Uh, there's a lot here. I can't even remember all of it, but the, the Balor thing really sticks out. Anyway, Lesnar climbs to the top of the ladder. Lesnar wins. It's like, that was a really good show to be in, and they just shit right in your mouth after that. That's what it felt like. But anyway, it is what it is. Brock Lesnar's Mr. Money in the Bank, and I'm sure this sets up Brock and Seth probably in the Saudi show. But uh, the show itself, wherever you think about the ending, you know, you think about it. The actual show was pretty good. It was a pretty good show. It was not a show... I think had you had a better ending, it would have been a great show, but I still think it's, it's, let's say it's really good. It's still the best pay-per-view, I think, from the main roster I've seen this year. That doesn't touch TakeOver, it's not even in the same ballpark, but 
The main roster shows, I thought this was really good. I enjoyed the show and I'd give it a thumbs up. So I'd recommend watching it. I enjoyed it.